part of being fat is knowing that to so many people, the most exciting, celebratory, incredible thing you could ever do is get thin. Getting smaller is the accomplishment above all accomplishments, above getting a master's degree, above getting a bachelor's degree. Okay above landing a great job in your career. Because most of those things are like majorly affected by the fact that you have the weight accumulated on you. Like if you die at 32 because of heart failure, because you weighed like double or triple what you should weigh, then like, why does it matter that you got a master's degree? Why does it matter that you got a bachelor's or a great career or that beautiful Prius that you just got like two days ago? There are certain things in life. I feel like these people just don't understand that there are priorities. And then there are ways at which you prioritize those priorities, right? You would think that somebody would prioritize their literal lifespan or like the healthiness of themselves above all else. That would, that, that if you don't have that, you have none of the other things because they're all literally fundamentally meaningless if you're a, a, a person that is literally shitting on your own health every single day. Like you're just like a fountain. You know what I'm talking about? Just like you're laying on your back. Okay, you're on the back of your neck and you just have your ass in the sky and you're taking a shit and it's just like fountaining back into your fucking face. That's what it's like when you are perpetually overweight and unhealthy for your entire life. And I know that sounds a little crazy to say, but somebody needs to tell these people because I'm sick of hearing Splotchmaker claim to be the victim so many times. Oh, people don't, all people ever want to talk about is me being fat. Splotchmaker, 80 to 90% of the shit you put on the internet is about you being fat. So I don't even know why you're even upset that most of the stuff that people want to talk to you about is being fat because that's what you talk about on a daily basis. So obviously, dude, okay? Like that's an obvious statement, Splotchmaker. And of course, like I said, dude, all that stuff is meaningless within within the, the, the ginormity of being healthy. If you're not any of those things and then people, like why would I care that you have a degree if you're gonna die in nine years? I hope you don't, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Above being in a healthy relationship above getting married, above getting engaged. Again, it's like all this stuff is great, beautiful, amazing, and steps, right? Have priorities, understand where they are, and then work through those things. But like, you should always try to have health be paramount in, in the face of all those other things because the health is gonna get you through all that stuff. What are you gonna like perpetually suffer through a marriage because you're fat as fuck and you can't do anything? Like how many times, okay, I've, I've had sex with a fat girl. I have, and it's not its not good. It's, I don't know if it's gonna be different from woman to woman. Obviously, it's gonna be different, but you know what I'm saying. Like, there's not, I didn't even know if I was actually having sex with this woman. I didn't. And you know when women fake it? You know when in, when women are like in a, in a relationship or you're having sex with a girl and she'll just kind of make it seem like she, she busted, but she didn't actually bust because she just wants to get things over with, right? Which is a very sad thing to say, actually. But I know uh, I had to do that in that particular scenario. And it, you might be like, David, how does that even happen? Because like women, you don't tell. You can't tell. Like, what are you going to do? Check? What are you going to see? Nothing. There's nothing there. I don't, I don't even know, you know, half the time, I don't even know what's going on with women when it comes to sexual activities, right? I have no idea. So, but when I was in the scenario, I remember this girl, she was like giving me a hand job, right? Which I'm totally fine with, by the way, right? I know a lot of girls think that they're, like, it's not like a, a, the apex in terms of things. There are things that are higher than that, but... No, most guys are going to be okay with the hand job. Anyway, she was giving me a hand job and I, it was going on for way too long and I was looking at her wig and her, her forehead was so big. It was so massive. I remember it, her forehead was so big that I told, I showed my friend a picture of her and he was like, that is the biggest forehead I've ever seen in my entire life. And I, after he said that to me, I almost couldn't not agree because it was very big, but I kept looking at her forehead and I was becoming unerect, if that makes any sense. And there's nothing worse than trying to explain to a woman why you're becoming unerect. You have to come up with like fake excuses, or sometimes it may not be like anything in particular. Like sometimes I've looked upon a woman's butthole and I go, you know, I know what this is. I know what this does. And I lose an erection. And then I have to like walk to the bathroom and slap my shit up a little bit and come back. You know what I'm talking about? Like you're Mike Tyson going into round nine or something like that. But anyway, uh, yeah, dude, I had to lie. She was like yanking on my shit. Like she was climbing a fucking mountain. And then I, I just like pushed her hand away and I was like, ah, damn. Woo. Yep. I, I came. I, it was, that was great. Wow. Um, that was so good. Let me go to the bathroom and clean up real quick. And then I came back and, uh, 
yeah, dude, I just kind of put my head in my lap and I was like, this is, that was, that was the worst. You know, I just kind of sat there like this because I was so disappointed in myself. Like, what was I just doing? What did I just do? Why did I do that? And it was very uncomfortable, super uncomfortable, dude. I think you should be fundamentally attracted to the person that you're with because sex is so much, so much better, dude, when you actually like the person. Anyway. Above, above, above. Calm down. It would be almost funny if it wasn't so deeply infuriating and dehumanizing. Well, if you know that people are going to like hyper focus on your fatness, especially for you, splotch maker, then why don't you just lose the weight and then just see what it's like on the other side where people actually value you based off of the accomplishments that you bring to the table. And to be honest, like, I don't even know why you would even like, why would anybody care that you have a bachelor's degree or anything like that? Like, it's cool when you have like people around you that do care about it. Like, oh, I just graduated. Oh, high five. That's so great. But like, why does anybody care? Like walking down the street or like going to a meeting or like anything like that. Why does anybody care that you have a bachelor's degree or you have a relationship or that you're married or any of this stuff? Like normal people, nobody cares. Why does that even matter? I don't know why some people feel like they have to put so much value on things that most people don't care about. You get what I'm saying? But regardless, the point I'm making is if you want those other things to be valued more so than your fatness, your big belliedness, then lose some fucking weight, dude. I don't know what to fucking tell you. You literally tell me all the time that you're putting yourself in a bracket of, I only listen to fat influencers. I only listen to people that are bigger than me. Yet you are here complaining that people only look at you because you're fat. How can you sit there and put weight as the number one thing you, you watch and then you're upset that people only talk about that to you? You're literally doing it to yourself. You, you always tell, you always say that. You always say, watch people bigger than you. Watch fat influencers. And now you're still depressed. So like, obviously something's got to happen, right? This, this is obviously not leading to the outcome that you want. Am I wrong? Like, what, 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 what do you do past this point? Like, you can't do much after this. Like, you have to go to like, I don't know, my 600 pound life and watch those people, I guess. Because we are not seen as human before we are seen as fat. I think you, you're seen as a fat person. You know what I'm talking about? In the same way that somebody, like, you're not seen as a fat person person you're seeing as a fat person you get what i'm saying in the same way that somebody sees a cat fish you understand like it's still a fish nobody's looking at it as a cat you get me they just see a a, a cat fish you understand like that's what you are you're a fat person fatness is seen as an other it's seen as its own identity separate from humanity because, because most of the stuff that it encompasses being overweight or fat is so incredibly interchangeable. Like you could literally at any point, if you decided to, to, to lose weight, you could do that. You know that, right? It's like so possible. It's so incredibly valid to go in, okay, get a gym membership. I don't know how much your gym memberships are, 20 bucks a month, let's say, and then uh, eat less food, which would lower the bank account even further, right? You would you would cease to be, be throwing all that food at Uber Eats and all those other delivery services and things like that, which I think are, is completely fine, by the way. If you want to order on Uber Eats, go ahead, but just don't do it so much that you you become obese, okay? But you would you would improve your health, right? How many times do you hear somebody that loses weight and they go, I feel so much better. I can move. I can do the things that I used to not be able to. My life has improved immeasurably. I see. I hear that constantly. And all it takes is a little bit of consistency and having the willingness to continue the path and do the thing that you know is not satisfying in the moment, but it will be satisfying at the end or even at that mid end, if that makes any sense. Once you get the build together, right? Once you start going down the journey, it becomes progressively easier and easier. It's very difficult at first because you have to drastically change your life up. Even like simple things like going to the gym, walking more or eating less food is like astronomical in the spectrum of people that never do that. You get what I'm saying? You're, you're really putting your foot into the deep end when you do shit like that, but it's worth it because the last at the very end or like sort of kind of like at the end, right? If it was in three separate parts at that last part, you are going to feel so amazing. Your life is going to improve immeasurably. You're going to be more attractive. People are going to want to be around you. It's just overall, I don't know why these people always sit there and say that there's nothing wrong with being fat while claiming that they're always being oppressed for being fat or they're never seen as like human beings, which is insane to me. It's fat. Fatness is seen as an other. It's seen as its own identity separate from humanity.
because it's seen as like a moral thing. It's seen as morally bad. It is because you have the ability to change it and you're not doing it. It's like somebody purposely walking around with like their leg dragging behind them. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's like in shambles, broken. They just got hit by a car and you're like, bro, you know that you have free healthcare, right? You know that you can go to the hospital right now and you can get that fixed. And by like next week, you'll be able to walk on it. And it'll actually, not only will it be better, but like, it's going to be like mechanical too. Like it's going to be like, you know, you'll be able to jump higher, do more stuff with it. And that person go, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to. No, nah, I don't want I don't want to do that. No, mm -mm. I, I, I don't like that because I'm not trying to oppress myself. Okay. I'm not trying to do that. Okay. I'm not trying to conform by society standards. What are you talking about, Splotch Maker? It is a moral failing. Why the fuck? Not only is it a moral failing, it's a physical failing. Because you have every ability. And I hate this thought process of like, sometimes people are just fat. If sometimes people are just fat, how come for like all of human history, we never seen a fat people like you? Like you are on a different level of obesity. And we've never seen that. There might have been like some king somewhere in like Indonesia or like Afghanistan that was like 400 pounds, right? Or, but that was like one guy. And that guy probably died of like dysentery or diarrhea at the age of 29 because his mother and father were, were sister and brother. You understand? Like this shit, what you're, what you're saying right now is like crazy. Of course it's a fucking failing, dude. What else could it possibly be? And to top it off, it's your failing. You can't even blame it on anybody else. Like how can you be upset that food exists and you took advantage of it to a degree that made you obese? And it sucks. Yeah. So much. Yeah. And fat people deserve to be celebrated. So what do you mean celebrated? Celebrated in what way? Like, how do we celebrate? I would often, I always want to know what they mean by fat people should be celebrated. How? How do we celebrate fat people? What do we do? Do we just like get you guys in a room together and just spray gravy on you? What do we do to celebrate fat people, dude? Woohoo! Early diabetes. You guys are probably not going to make it to 60. This is amazing. Heart failure. This is what do you like? What are we celebrating, dude? Early death? What is the celebration for? What are we celebrating, huh? The ability for human beings not to look like human beings anymore? What are we talking? What are we talking about? What are you celebrating right now? What? It's like the it's like the misconception of like it'd be like a, a gay dude being like, you know what? We need to be celebrated. And they just whip out their dicks and go and suck that shit up. Go ahead. Gobble down on my big long john silver. Nah, bro. What kind of celebration do you want? Don't you guys already have a month? Isn't it August? You guys have a month, okay? Like, I think that there are many of things that could be celebrated before you guys get your own month. Coats? What about jackets? Those things are, like, paramount. I love jackets, okay? I'm wearing a hoodie right now. How about we celebrate that? What about socks? Hmm? Everybody wears socks. I think you could never find a person that would dislike socks. And we're celebrating fat people. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Makes sense, dude. I mean, I, I don't see why, but It right. sucks. So much. But you know what else? You know what else sucks? You know what else sucks, dude? The fact that I can't eat like 19 watermelons a day. You know, the fact that I can't eat Oreos and not gain weight. You know what? That it just. Oh man, that does suck. You know what else sucks? That I can't just buy a Tesla right now, or like a Lamborghini, or like any of these like really exotic, expensive items that I obviously cannot afford. That sucks. You know, that really sucks. Do you understand what I'm saying? Things suck. Okay, it is what it is. But you know the funny thing? You can actually make it unsuck. Yeah. You can invert fellatio that shit. And you're not. So I don't know why you're complaining to me right now. And fat people deserve to be celebrated. Why? So much more. Why? For everything in their lives. Because we just aren't. We but like why? Because you guys have to like navigate the world being a fat person. I'm sorry that stairs exist. What do you fucking want? Like, oh, oh, oh we have to be celebrated because our lives are so much harder than regular people's. Bro. My life is the same as your life, except you're making your life more difficult by not being able to walk upstairs appropriately or like having to walk down this. I'm sorry that we have to walk places. I'm sorry that you don't have like $80 billion to hire Ubers everywhere you need to go because the idea of walking down the street is so incredibly impractical for you. What are, what are you talking about? Like, how do we alleviate the problem of fat people? Or like, why should we have to celebrate somebody that can barely breathe walking up four steps? How is that, like, what do you mean? What was a celebration for that? That's depressing. That's, uh, I feel like I would actually be depressed in that environment. So much more for everything in their lives because we just aren't. We aren't. And we know there's one secret recipe for everyone to be rooting for us. Gravy. Gravy and probably 
pop tarts probably peanut butter and pop tart sandwiches right i don't know and one secret recipe yeah. for everyone to be against us what is it which is being fat positive okay or staying fat is that really the antidote though in order to alleviate your problems and all the problems that you're suffering from which is that you're fat all those problems can be alleviated by staying fat how does that even fucking make sense? That's like somebody sitting there with a giant gash in their leg and going, I know that this gash is like bleeding profusely and that it, it could probably be alleviated right now if I went to the hospital. But you know how do we really solve this problem? You know the antidote to this particular leg wound is to have more leg wounds and to have the leg wounds be bleeding more. Yeah, more so and have it even bigger, bigger leg wounds. That's what you're saying right now. So, like, in order to solve your obesity problem, just become more obese or be fatter? How does that even happen? What? You All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Am I dumb? Am I dumb? I'm probably dumb. <laughs> I'm dumb, dude. I'm dumb. Even though there are so many health risks with weight loss. Get. Stop. Just stop it. Just stop it, dude. I, I, I just, I'm not even going to try. There's this. Why would you ever say a blasphemous statement like this in your entire life? Does your tongue not have like a, a reflex to saying that? Like, I feel like if you were to say that, there are so much, there are so many health risks to losing weight. Ugh, like, I feel like it should just end like that. I feel like you should start puking because the statement itself is so blasphemous. I genuinely feel like there should be a gag reflex at the end of that. You cannot tell me as somebody that is so monstrously overweight that you complain that you can't walk upstairs, fit in car seats, and the world sucks for you because you have to navigate it as a fat person. And then tell me there's health risks to losing weight? What are the health risks? Living longer? A suckier life because you're living longer? <laughs> Is that the health risk? Or like, I don't know, like having less joint pain. So that means that you have an ability to walk further. And maybe because you walk further, you step on a snake and a snake bites you. And then that's a health risk. Where, where are you drawing this conclusion from exactly? Why is it a health risk to lose weight? Because I've never... Splotchmaker is just a, you know, I, I love her. I love Splotchmaker, dude. I really love her. You want some sugar? Even though for the vast, vast, vast majority of people, they will gain back more weight than where they started. Who, who said this, bro? I, I need to talk to the person that said this because they use this one too often, dude. If you lose weight, it's bad for you because you'll actually gain weight in return how does that even happen the entire process of losing weight is to, to keep it off now granted there could be a rebound at some point but you know what's really interesting about the way they describe that rebound is oftentimes when they describe that rebound it's usually like oh yeah i lost all, all this weight and then i kept it off probably for like five six seven years but then i gained weight back and they go i knew it huh <laughs> rebounding and you probably gain more weight when you well, like yeah but i'm like 42 now and i'm not as like you know i don't have the ability to do what i once did when i was like 22 so it's like different right it's like no 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 no. that's that's what that's fat phobia see like it's all rooted in fat phobia that, that's the thing it's like no dude okay if you were able to keep the weight off for six seven years that's fucking great that's amazing you know how much health that you just gained back on that time frame a lot a fuck ton in comparison to the negative health status that you were taking like permanent permanent like negative one numbers popping up above your head like you have a permanent debuff playing in an mmo yeah you you did a great service to yourself dude and if you're gonna count that regain after you like i don't know like five six seven eight like 10 20 years that's ridiculous splotchmaker no it's not true by the way either dude like even if there's no, there's just that. Vast, vast, vast majority of people, they will gain back more weight. It's just like the words that come out of Splotchmaker's mouth are so incredibly wrong. And I don't, I hope, I really, if she genuinely believes all the things that she says, that's going to be, that's an interesting way of looking at life. It really is because you're like literally telling people they should stay fat because they would be healthier fat, which is crazy of a statement. They would be healthier fat. They would be... <laughs> They would gain more weight if they lost weight, which doesn't make any sense. But okay, you would gain more weight. Like you're literally advocating for people to do nothing in 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 the in the idea of suffering health. Okay, yeah, that's like a gay man trying to convince me to be gay by telling me like, oh yeah, you would get a lot of pussy, bro. Trust me, dude. Being gay, oh bro, it'd be awesome, dude. Women would just flock all over you, vagina everywhere. They would just be like 
women would just like you'd walk down the street and it'd be like a sprinkler system of women squirting upon you it'd be amazing bro and at the end of it guess what there would be bbc's and you get to suck on them. best of both worlds dude like the, the the way you're describing this shit doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense it's not centered in reality at all this because people don't talk about the toll it takes on you when you are a walking worst case scenario simply by existing in public simply by existing online we are constantly being compared to as a thank god i don't look like that yeah because you guys are suffering on it you guys are suffering every single day in a dramatic way and the funny thing is like you could totally alleviate your problems whenever you want to so of course you're the worst case scenario so not only are you suffering from the fact that your body is perpetually unhealthy and like you just don't see a reason to, to solve the issue but your mental health is also fucked up to to the point where you don't even see a reason to lose weight like you are double like double ending that shit you get what i'm saying if there was a double ended dildo of getting fucked you would be taking both uh, simultaneously probably in the same hole too right because i couldn't even take that like if there was a double-ended dildo women could do two at once right but for me because i don't have the appropriate hole right i, I would just have to take double like double it up right at the same hole so regardless the way you're thinking about shit is like doubling up fucked thank god i'm not that yeah. fat thank god i'm not that fat yeah bro thank god i don't have to suffer from all the health complications not if i fall down the stairs do i know if i'm gonna break the stairs do i know if i'm ever gonna get up again will i ever be fully able to like attract another human being because my gut is 18 inches length wait like wh wh why do you guys always say this shit as if it's not obvious like there's a reason why people think this shit and you're just claiming that it's like not real Thank God I'm not you. Yeah. Thank God I'm not fat and ugly. Ugly. You can feel it. If you have never been visibly fat. Dude, Splotchmaker's entire identity is feel bad for me. I'm a victim. I'm fat. Therefore, I have all these problems. Even though <laughs> I just, I cannot believe somebody could put themselves in this bracket of I'm a victim so hard because i never wanted to be a victim right me personally so i have no idea where i mean it's okay if you are actually a victim right and you're you're suffering from that and then you want to like have people acknowledge it that's okay but splotch maker's entire identity seems to be that that she's a victim of like some sort of you know societal structure or like maybe how you think about how i think like she just defines herself based off of these truths and that has to be agonizing every single day you're waking up and with the idea in your head of there's nothing I can do to change myself. I take no accountability for myself. I am fat. Therefore, everyone hates me and everybody thinks they're better than me. This is ha this has to be the absolute worst way of living. You have a suck dick life. That is so terrible. How can you live like that? Why don't you like... There's nothing you can do, really? Like, not anything for yourself? It's just, it's too easy to blame your problems on society because now you're taking away all the accountability that you would have been able to take and do something for yourself. You're putting it upon somebody else or like a society when those societies probably don't even know you exist. Like, most people don't give a fuck about you. Most people, 99.9% .9 of people don't care. So why would you put your problems on those people? Why can't you instead make your world your own problem? Why can't you do it yourself? It, it'd be, it's way easier to solve your own problems than it is to get like, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere, some somebody somewhere in like Indonesia or West Africa to solve your fucking issues, dude. Fix it yourself, splotch maker. I'm sorry that you are, you're fat and you're suffering from that. Uh, get thin. Lose weight. What? Like, I'm sorry that you're bleg. Lose the weight and stop being that bleg. You don't understand. Okay the feeling okay. of walking into a room yep. and knowing that pretty much everyone, the grocery store, the doctor's office, the mall, TikTok, people are walking by, people are scrolling by, and they're saying, oh, thank God, I don't look like you. So lose weight! So why the fuck is it my fault? Why should I feel bad for you, huh? Why should I? It, it's not the same thing. 
right? As me walking down the street and seeing a pigeon with no legs, I feel bad for that pigeon. I always feel bad for that pigeon. I don't even know how he landed. How did he get on the floor, right? Because I know all his pigeon friends are making fun of him. I know that they are. He has no legs. I saw two days ago, there was a pigeon with zero legs and he was just on the floor and he was doing this. He was just like rocking and he would like somewhat sometimes could fall on the floor. But like, I can't do anything about that because like, what am I going to fucking do? I'm not the pigeon rescuer. I can't even talk to those people. You know, like if you go up to pigeons and try to strike up a conversation, they don't like that. So you can't say anything and they don't have the ability to even comprehend what you're saying at all. So but the point I'm making is you're not a pigeon without legs, Splotchmaker. You are a person, an individual with thought patterns. And I know you have thought patterns. I know you have recognitions. You can you can easily put two and two together. I see that you have the ability to form sentences in a cohesive way. So why instead of forming these sentences in a way of, oh, boo-hoo, I suffer. I have people that think I'm fat. I have people that think I'm ugly. I have people that think that I'm unhealthy, right? Instead of having people say those things to you, why, didn't, why don't you instead change what they say why don't you lose the weight and put you in a bracket of damn look at her she is pretty she is delicioso oh man you look so wow your kneecaps are so good looking today splotch maker wow i need to turn on the light really really bright to see every single amazing feature of your bot that's what you want right that's fine that's cool dude that's awesome but you're not gonna get there by complaining perpetually that people think that you're ugly. Like, what do you, it's just depressing. I don't want to be around somebody that always has problems like this. It's just a terrible way of like fitting into society at all. Like you can't change society, but you can change your society. You can make yourself better. Okay. It's not as hard as you claim it to be. You're a worst case scenario. At least I'm not that. People literally chop off their organs amputate their stomachs, huh. take experimental drugs that make them miserable and sick and have lethal side effects just so they can look less like me. Well, it's not just look, though. They're also having less fat on their bodies. They're doing it because the alternative of keeping the fat on their body is such a drastic lifestyle, okay? Talk to anybody that's like really overweight, really, really obese. Their life perpetually sucks. And they may not realize it because most of the time when you're living in a fat body, you just kind of adapt to your new norm, right? You just kind of eventually have this be your new norm over time, right? And maybe it's slowly, it's slowly but surely, right? Maybe you gain like 20 pounds and you can't like tie your shoe appropriately anymore, but you still can kind of tie it. Or, you know, maybe you gain 100 pounds and now you can't tie your shoe at all, but you get sketchers and you could just kind of zip them over or push, push your foot against a wall real quick and have that be pushed over. And then suddenly you can't wash your own ass anymore. And then suddenly you can't do fucking anything because you're so fat that the idea of doing any menial activity has to become so far out of reach that it's no longer plausible. That's how most people live, I feel like, that are fat. They don't realize it until they realize it. You understand? And I feel like that is a terrible life. And once you realize that shit, you realize, I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to have these problems. I want to lose weight and get into a healthier framework so I can actually live my life to the way that I feel like I should be able to. So when you say, People are chopping off their organs, which is a very interesting way of putting that. A bariatric surgery, by the way. And taking pills and doing all this other stuff because the alternative is suck dick. The alternative is a terrible, disgusting, bad life. You understand? And like the alternative, sure, these are bad things, but you do understand we live in an imperfect world. If there was easy to lose weight and just do it like that, I'm sure many people would do it. But that's not how it works. You got to do extreme things in order to do that stuff, okay? I'm sorry that like your lifestyle is okay for you to live, but it is not for most people. Look less like us. It's not look though. Like I feel like it's less to do with like, or, like look, but more so to do with the practicality of living in an overweight body for a prolonged period of time. You know, like I, I couldn't even imagine living in a body like that for a week, let alone an entire life. Fatness is such a worst case scenario for people. It's unreal. Just because I, I like, it's just, you know, what I love about splotch maker is that she has this ability to go. I'm a victim. I am somebody that needs to be praised for me being fat. And then also takes the moral high ground so often by saying things like, it's unbelievable that people think like this. Look at me. I don't think like that. So obviously I'm so much better than you because I know what I'm doing. What kind of it girl are you, dude? What is this? <laughs> what is this? Like, 
I am her, she is me type mentality, dude. Why are you looking down upon us because we don't want to be fat, but you're so much better than us because you're fat? That doesn't make any sense. Just because you find the value in it doesn't mean there's actually value in it. You get what I'm talking about? Like, what you're doing right now is like rummaging through trash and garbage. Like, actual trash and garbage. It's probably like a blender over there right? There's a banana peel and there's probably like five used condoms right there. Those just got here, by the way. That's probably from like the trash guy. You know what I'm talking about? Whatever. And you're rummaging through all of that. And then you found a spoon. Okay. You found a spoon and then you go, I told you valuable spoon, but the spoon is covered in Oreos, milkshake, and semen. You understand? Like it's not a treasure. You want, what are you going to lick it clean? Your treasure, the way you're looking at it, like you're, you're putting yourself on a high and mighty platform as if anybody wants to be there and claiming that you know the truth. You don't know the fucking truth, Sposhmaker, but I'm glad you think you do. I'm, I'm glad you do. You know, we really grew up as children dreaming about such morbid things. Yeah, but you were also growing up in a morbid environment. If you were fat as fuck growing up, you're, if you grew up fat... You're going to be fat for the rest of your life. It's just so sad to say that, but it's the truth, okay? It's so hard to beat out the obesity out of your body when you get older because it's been ingrained in you so incredibly deeply. So if you grew up fat, splotch maker, that's fucking terrible. I feel for you. I really do. That I can't even say on TikTok, but is such a widely experienced experience as a fat person in this society that there are songs about it. What? about taking scissors, dreaming of getting sick and staying in the hospital. What? Someone dreaming the cuckoo's nest? Of by any means necessary thinness. I don't know about any means necessary. I'd never advocate for anybody, never. I would never advocate for somebody to, to miss meals. Like if you wanna fast, that's fine. That's different from like missing meals. You get what I'm talking about? Like if you wanna go on a fast and not eat for like a day or two, as long as you're doing it responsible, responsibly and you know what you're doing, that's fine. I know many people that do fasting uh, one or two days out of the week, sometimes every month or two, just to get that like refresh, you know what I'm talking about? And I've been thinking about doing it myself, but there are, there are plenty of ways to do that. But I also always advocate for people to eat appropriately, nutritious meals, just a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is not bad. A calorie deficit is completely valid under most every circumstance when it comes to losing weight ever, because you're taking the calories that you would have ordinarily ate and you're reducing it. And that's going to cause you to lose weight, which is the ultimate goal if you're obese or fat. So, I, you know, I would never advocate for somebody to lose weight by any means necessary. If that was the case, then, like, if, if your doctor was like, oh, yeah, you need to lose, like, 60 pounds, then, like, I guess the, the worst case scenario of doing that is getting, like, a fucking saw and cutting off your arm and giving him your arm because your arm probably weighs, like, 60 pounds. But you didn't actually even do anything, you know? Like, you just lost the weight. You didn't lose weight. You just lost weight, if that makes any sense. So, no, nobody's saying that, Splotch Maker. Nobody. There might be, look, generally speaking, nobody is saying that. There might be like those weird people somewhere on the internet that think that losing weight by any means necessary, I guess, that I'm sure people like that exist. I'm sure they do. But those people are anomalies, okay? No, we don't value those people. You understand? It's like, it's like some, it's like you, you, like the people in your group, for instance, you have people that are level-headed and will say things, but then you have people like you, Splotchmaker, that say like the weirdest fucking craziest shit. You know, you have people on your side that are saying things like, you know, stairways are fat phobic and, and you know, bathrooms are fat phobic and treadmills are fat. Like those are crazy people, but those are anomalies in your organizations. You understand? Because fatness is the worst case scenario. Not the worst. I wouldn't, there are many things that are way worse than being fat. Like there are so many wor worse things than being fat. And this intersects with so many things. Whoa. Fat phobia and ableism <laughs> are like this. It's They're just like too easy for them to, to put themselves next to other like oppressed categories dude like it's one thing to say that you're oppressed because you can't walk upstairs and then to be like oh yeah ableism because a guy in a wheelchair without legs can't get up that same flight of stairs therefore we're the same it's not the same it's not the same bro it's not that guy without legs he couldn't do anything about that you 
can lose weight. And it'd probably be better if you took the stairs anyway. You get what I'm talking about? Like, best friends. I wouldn't fat say that. people and disabled people alike are constantly told that, oh my god, I'd kill myself. Yeah, but, like, I wouldn't say that. That's fu- Whoa! That's, that's kind of crazy, bro. I would not fucking say that. Why are you putting yourself next to disabled people, dude? I know some disabled people, not mentally, but like physically disabled people that live amazing lives, amazing, fantastic lives. And yes, it sucks that they're missing things or they have features of their bodies that they would want to have that they don't have, right? That's true. I know a blind guy and it sucks because he doesn't understand the beauty of seeing the color blue, for instance. It is truly beautiful. And or seeing somebody like you. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine all, all the joy he's missing out on not looking at you every single day? And I'm being serious. But the point I'm making is just because they're not living the life that they would have ordinarily wanted to live doesn't mean their life sucks dick or like it's so bad that they have to unalive themselves. That's fucking terrible, dude. No, that's ungodly levels of bad. Nobody's doing that shit. All right. I'm, I'm sure there are people. There are people. I'm sure there are. But most people, I feel like, because I was thinking about this recently, right? I remember somebody was like talking about how to be an it girl and that's fine. You want to be an it girl. You want to be her. You want to be, I am that girl. That's fine. Right. And I remember looking at this video and somebody, the girl, which by the way, like if you want to be an it girl, you can, but the, the way this woman defined it was like, work on your self-confidence, be this self-reflection, understand this, be this, be this, be this. And I was just thinking, like, nobody thinks like this. Like nobody is putting this much effort into redefining the way that they are most people are the way that they are and they can work on things you get what i'm talking about and i think it's such a bad way of being like be more confident which is a good idea but if you're not already a confident person you it may be a disservice to you to like force yourself into these particular brackets you know or uh be more expressive be more this reach out in your 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 particular type of fashion sense wear more pink or whatever the fuck it's just like if it isn't you don't force yourself to be a different person you get what i'm saying i don't think most people think like that i think most people have an idea of the way that they are and they work within within those frameworks for their life and they can maybe adjust things as they go on if that makes any sense nobody's hyper thinking about how do i make myself really 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 an it girl in the sense of like being confident and wearing more clothes and being this and being that it no most people are not thinking about it like that they're just going about their day and maybe they're doing small incremental changes in order to make themselves better you know like you are who you are and that's okay you get me if i were disabled i'd kill myself whoa you can't be saying that shit dude you would do that in minecraft yeah you would do that in minecraft it doesn't feel good. Yeah, but like there's a lot of things that don't feel good. Okay, Splotch Maker. And I get it. It is very terrible for people to say that. But dude, I remember very vividly somebody saying something like, David, you look like the black stuff in between the controller. You know that like little slit? You know the dirt in, that forms in between the controller when you hold the controller, you don't wash it for a long time and it has like the black slit. Somebody said that I look like that. That was the worst thing that anybody ever said to me because it was clever it came out of nowhere and it had absolutely no value to the conversation it was just something that somebody said to me you know what i'm talking about that was the worst thing somebody ever said to me i don't care anymore if somebody says david you a bitch you look like a frog you look like adolf hitler you look like mario or waluigi i don't care like yeah i mean i know though <laughs> all those people by the way with the exception of hitler uh are pretty cool people right i'm okay with being called waluigi or like mario those dudes are cool i love chris pratt you know i love uh who's the guy that plays as uh luigi uh whatever that guy is from that one that one show that everybody likes with danny devito and the giant schlong right i like that show uh always sunny in philadelphia that guy daniel something day so i don't know regardless i'm okay with these things but the point i'm making is life is unfair but you are responsible for making yourself better like and you know what's crazy too is that being in america you have probably the most ability to change your to, to change your environment or to change the way that people see you because if like you were in like west africa or like fucking ghana or something like that and you had no options or very limited options then like you lucked out you lucked out with you being here you get what i'm saying you probably didn't have many choices but you have many choices here and that's fucking amazing you get what i'm talking about so much of our life is not determined based off of who we are but how lucky we were right like i remember i heard somebody say this before they said how did it how did you make so much money how did you make all this stuff and this dude said well i think it's really fucked up that i made all my money because like 
I, I really lucked out. I was in the right place at the right time. And I had all these like people that were helping me at the right time. But if I was like in another time frame or whatever, I would have just been a loser for the rest of my life. And that's so incredibly true. Growing up with two parents, growing up in a stable household, growing up in a, in a state, a place that has the internet, growing up in a place that has good worth ethic. This shit has nothing to do with you. Like you did nothing to achieve any of that. But yet you were lucky enough to be in a scenario where all these things were in place for you. You understand? And it's so sad to me when I see people that could be engineers, that could be doing amazing, beautiful, spectacular things, but they didn't have the luck. They didn't have the luck to be put in a place where they where they were shown to be to be shown that they had a path to get there. Or there was a path. There wasn't a path. You know? That fucking sucks so much dick to me. I see too many people suffering from that shit and we would benefit so much. Like if somebody was a mechanic, but they would rather be an engineer and they have the aptitude, but they have no way of getting to that goal. That sucks dick. We need more opportunities for people like that because um, too many people are missing opportunities. And if, if it was a guy that was like burning fucking wood in a field because that was the only job he could do uh, rather than if he could go to like college and get a degree and like some finance shit and make the next like biggest fucking invention or cure cancer where that dude's missing out you know we're missing out but so much of what you have is based off of luck you get what i'm talking about but the great thing about being in america is that even though you were lucky or unlucky to be here depending on how you're looking at it you were lucky enough to be in america and i don't think there's any other spot in the world that i would rather be to change shit you get what i'm talking about so be fucking grateful, dude. Be fucking super grateful. I'm not saying things can't change. I'm not saying things don't suck in certain circumstances. But I'm also thinking, dude, look how fucking lucky I am, right? I'm going to have chicken today, right? I'm going to have chicken and I'm going to have potatoes. How many other pieces, how many other places on the, on the world is that even possible? Not many. To be part of a group that people would kill themselves oh, rather and, than and, and, and In Minecraft, in Minecraft. And... That's part of why I talk about what I talk about. But it's but people will say that about anything. Like, bro, I've literally had people tell me. Well, maybe people kind of like just bullshit. Like, I remember somebody told me, like, I would literally unalive myself if I couldn't get an erection. Or people just say things sometimes, dude. It is what it is. I mean, it would suck, though, if you were in a, a position and you needed to be bricked up, but you couldn't get bricked. I've been in situations like that. I remember one of the first times I lost my virginity because I don't really count that first time I lost my virginity. At least I try not to because I don't want to really. I, I could have been having sex with like a piece of, uh, I don't even know. It could have just been a greased up piece of flesh, honestly. I, it could have been anything. I don't know. It, I don't think it was actually a vagina. So that first time, I don't like to count as like, I'll still kind of consider it as like a woman I had sex with, but I don't think it was a vagina. So but I remember I had sex with this one girl, dude. And I remember I was at her house and dude, I was under so much pressure because like I hadn't had sex in like six, seven, eight months at that time. And I hadn't, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Right. And I remember I was like on top dude and I couldn't get hard. And I was like, so I was like flabbergasted. Dude. It was uncanny because like any other circumstances, I thought it was gonna be like one of these guys that just couldn't get erect in other people's presence because I had fucked myself up perpetually with pornography. So I just like laid back. I was like, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me, dude. But luckily she was an understanding gal and she helped me, you know, like she got me out of my shell. And luckily nowadays I'm bricked up right now. You know, I'm, I'm bricked up 24 seven all the fucking time. I'm perpetually hard all the time. No, not all the time. But, like, I don't have a problem now, right? Or at least I'm more appropriate. It's better uh, than being when you're, like, 16 years old and you're popping an erection at, like, a funeral. That's probably not the best because, like, you don't really control. I feel like a lot of women don't understand that when dudes go through their uh, period, I mean, pu puberty, 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 uh, they don't have control a lot of the times. Like, I remember literally just being in class and just getting an erection, you know, just out of nowhere, not even looking, I would just be, you know, just doing nothing, you know what I'm talking about, just looking off at the brick wall, and I'm like, damn, what the fuck, I'm bricked up right now, for no reason, for no reason, had nothing to do with anything, and it'd be really difficult if you had to, like, stand up, bro, because then you have to be, you have to do one of these, you know, you have to go like that, maybe move around a little bit, to try to readjust your Long John Silver, and that's tough, that's really tough, dude, I feel like a lot of women don't understand that because like the way you get erections as women is more inconspicuous compared to the way guys get erections, right? So I feel like a lot of women don't understand that. Like we're oppressed too, you know, but not so much anymore. Not, not, I, now I can control it. Now I have the ability to not get erections, which is a very powerful ability. 
very powerful. I think most men should probably practice it. It's why I'm visibly fat online. Giving more of that visibility and perspective because representation is fucking everything. Dude, what a superhero, bro. She's not she's not fat because she has no <laughs> Because she doesn't have the responsibility to lose weight. No, she's fat because she's doing it for you. She's doing it for us, for the visibility's sake. Can you imagine suffering to this degree for a fucking terrible cause? <laughs> you're literally telling me you're suffering every single day for somebody to see you and go, oh, I'm fat too. Yeah, that's great. I'm so glad that I have representation. What are you talking about? Can you just keep it a buck? Like you're, you're fat because you don't want to lose weight. You're not doing it for anybody else. Why are you, why are you lying? Why are you lying, dude? It's not even a good cause. You're you're fat because you want people to see fat people? I don't know, all right, man. And maybe, maybe I can change some minds. You're not. We can change some minds. If you change anybody's mind about this shit, those people have to have a mental deficiency. A hundred percent. You have to be like some kind of deep cognitive dissonance. If you believe that being fat is okay and there's nothing wrong with it, but like within the spectrum of society where we know there's something wrong with it, that doesn't make sense. That you, you have some problems. We can get some perspective in here. We can call it out. Talk to me, splotch maker, bro. Let's do a video together. Let's talk about why you think this way. Because fat phobia is everywhere. Yeah. Ableism is everywhere. Just like chicken pox or like STIs. And it is so liberating. What is? Once we are able to deconstruct. Once. <laughs> That internalized ableism, that internalized fat phobia, and just escape the arbitrary beauty standards. I think some people really want to do, I think a lot of people have this like imposter syndrome where they feel like they have to do something or they have to act in a particular way to try to, I don't know, put on like a facade for other people. And I think that we all do it to a certain degree. Like you're not, you're not you every single day right? Every, you're like a different variant of yourself when you wake up, right? You you might be more energetic. You might be a little bit more laid back. You might be a little bit more conservative, whatever, right? But I think that in these particular scenarios, I see people trying to put on this fake idea of them and it's not sustainable. I see too many times because like in any other circumstance, you might be able to do it on the internet. You might be able to do it in videos, but like if somebody catches you, in a live stream or somebody catches you in real life, you're not gonna be that same person. So why do you do it? Is it practical? It might be, it might have been practical at a time frame where nobody checked you on. You know what I'm talking about? But like this like idea of like, oh, I'm a fucking look at me. I'm 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 really trying to show people, look, you know, we're gonna deconstruct this. And th nobody talks like that. Nobody thinks like this shit in real life. Like this is, this is such a fucking far-fetched way of thinking. It it doesn't. It doesn't relate to reality. It doesn't. Yeah, you know, get get new words. Get new fucking words. And, and, and stop acting like you're somebody you're not, Splotch. I know you don't actually think like this. In society. I hope you don't. It is so liberating. You don't even know what it's like. It sounds like you're you're talking about farting for the first time. That was like it was like pent up. You know, and you didn't want to fart around other people. You ever had that time where you like in a group of people or something like that and you knew that it was about to be crazy, right? But you didn't fart. And then when it came back, it was about to be bigger and worse. And then you just had to let it go. And it just was crazy. Like I remember one time I was in like middle school, right? And there was this fat, there was, he wasn't fat, but he was a big busky kid. And he was like solid African. They used to make fun of him a lot because he was so black. They used to literally say he was blacker than the street or blacker than underneath cars or blacker than underneath your bed. Anyway, he was like solid African. Like when I used to talk to him, he'd be like, one day I go back to the motherland. And I'd be like, oh yeah, where's that? And he's like, Africa. And I was like, I never heard anybody talk about Africa as the motherland, dude. But he has showed me a video of a guy having sex with a fish. But anyway, this dude, I remember so vividly, dude. He was a good, he's a good guy. I would, I had to bust some serious ass, dude. And we were in gym class, right? And I was running, doing, I don't know what the fuck I was doing, but I was running around and I have busted ass in a circle around this dude, like a crop duster. And then everybody thought that he had busted this shit up and it was crazy. Like I, I couldn't even believe that I was even eligible to like dispense that kind of exhaust out of my butt cheeks, bro. It was insane. But I busted some serious ass and this dude took it all. Like people were talking about like, Damn, bro, you stink, bro. That shit is crazy, dude. Yo, yo, your butt cheeks. You gotta have that bubble gut. 
Your shit is fucking crazy. You got to take a shit. Like, that's how I was just sitting there laughing my ass off, dude. And, uh, yeah, bro, I don't, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. That shit was too funny, bro. And to this day, I believe somebody probably still make jokes about that time that that dude busted some serious ass, but he didn't actually bust any ass. It was me. <laughs> I was the fucking villain. Can you believe that shit? Yeah. Yeah. You would have thought it was him, though, because he was way bigger than me. The way I was able to. Like, that's, that's how you know, bro. They used to do that same shit to me when I was coming to school. Kids used to come up to me like, yo, David, bro, can I, can I hide my knife in your bag? Can I hide my knife in your bag? Can I hide my, you know, people would sneak in video games to trade video games or whatever the fuck, right? Can I hide this? Can I hide that? And the, you, you know the reason why, right? Because I was the only white kid in the entire school. So when I would come in, they would never check my bag. Or at least they would they would just kind of do a quick check. You know what I'm talking about? They would, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you're good. That's what they would do. But these black kids that would come in, dude, they would get checked like crazy. But then again, a lot of them, they would just get caught with shit. Like, I, listen, if you're hiding shit in your bag, you don't hide it directly where you can see that shit. Put it in like a hidden compartment that you know you cut a hole somewhere. Put it in between something. Whatever. But they would give me stuff. And I would hide knives, bro. I would hide games. I would hide a whole bunch of stuff, dude. Illicit activities. Weed. And um, I don't recommend doing it. But like where I grew up, dude, uh, you needed to have a hawk. Like I had a hawk. Everybody had a hawk. Because somebody would most definitely run up on you. It would happen a lot. Like the amount of times that somebody would try to step to you. And nobody was fighting fair. Nobody. Nobody was fighting fucking fair. What are you talking about, dude? Yeah, everybody had a hawk. And there might have been some sanctioned fights. Where people would come together, culminate, and go, listen, we're going to have this man dingo fight later tonight. Meet me here. I'm going to beat your ass. And they would do it. But a lot of times, people would just start swinging on you for no reason. So it was just tough, dude. And it would be better to have a knife than not have a knife. You know? Because a lot of times, people didn't stop when you were on the floor. But uh, yeah, bro. That's, that's just, it was a terrible time, bro. It was a terrible time. Uh, but the point I'm making is, like, I was white. And I was like, literally, there was like four white people in the entire school and two of them were other teachers. And um, yeah, they would give me stuff, bro. Unless you've escaped it. People will go on a weight loss journey and then say, oh my God, I feel so yep. much better 100%. after losing weight. It's so much better to lose weight, bro. I've seen this phenomenon too. The amount of times I've seen people go, yo, David, I've lost all this weight. I feel so much better now. I can do so much more and it's nothing more satisfying than seeing that your life was fucked up and now it's so much fucking better, right? It's like you, your eyes were closed for so long, but you didn't know they were closed and then you opened them up and then BBC. It's like being a gay man for your entire life and then sucking upon a black guy and then you realize what you've been missing the entire time if you were gay deep down always, right? I'm not talking about myself, but I'm just saying in general. That's what it's like. I've talked to so many people that have lost a tremendous amount of weight and told me the amount of like exercise they're able to do now and not even exercise, like even just having the capacity of having a clear mind and not having to worry about the fact that they have all these health problems. That shit is such a weight that lifts off your shoulders, right? And then you can move more, you can do more. It's just way better. It's just so much more better. But I'm sure Splotch Maker is not gonna actually recognize that. I mean, look at this fucking face. Look at this. But you think that she's gonna come to the realization that this is truthful? No. Oh my God, I feel so much better after losing weight. I just have more energy waking yep. up in the morning. Yep. My body just moves better. Isn't it weird that you have like, like you're, you're sitting there with all this extra pent up energy on your body. Cause that's what fat is. It's just storage of energy on your body. Yet you are less energy efficient than a person with almost none. Like that is cra <laughs> that's crazy to me. I just feel more myself. Like, ugh. come on guys. Whole time they're exercising. Yeah. Eating more fruits and veggies. Uh, I wouldn't say that, dude. I wouldn't say fruits and vegetables are fine to eat, but I wouldn't say that they are the reason why people lose weight. It's just like a byproduct. Like fruits and vegetables, people eat them is because they're nutritious and they're low in calorie. That's the reason why. What this person should be saying is they're eating more nutritious foods. I don't really fuck with like the idea of eating fruits and vegetables objectively is going to make you thinner. Like if you're still eating like a bajillion of them, you're still gaining weight. And three, sticking to a routine. Yep. But somehow, that always gets pushed to the side as if that is an inconsequential part of why they feel better. As if it has no, no part whatsoever in how they felt better. It was not the fact 
that they increased the diversity of their diet. It was not the fact that they started moving their body more. Sure, I think that there is a by there is a benefit to moving your body more. There is a benefit. I wouldn't say diversification of a diet. I would actually say something more so like having the ability to stick to a particular diet. I would say that because I know for me, I don't really like diversity. I'm a very plain eater, right? So I love eating things that are just like the same shit every single fucking day, basically. But sure, a diversification of a diet in the sense of like more nutritious foods, you will find a better outcome of to your life eating things that are better for you and moving more, but usually the most benefit you're going to find, especially coming from a fat or obese background, is the fact that you are no longer any of those things, and you are more, if you're still 450, and you've been, you've been, you've been drinking, you know, you're drinking lots of water, moving more, and doing all this stuff, but you're still 450 at the end of that four, five, six, seven months, sure, I'm, I'm sure you feel better, but like, what is your definition of better? When you're still being prohibited by that 450 fucking pounds, that big ass 450 fucking pounds all over your body. You understand? I think that most of the time when people feel better after weight loss, it is because they reduce the amount of weight on their body that is physically pushing them down upon the earth or like fucking with their organs, fucking with their hormones. Yes, 100%. So I don't, I mean, I get what you're saying, Splotch Maker, but I feel like it's a drop in the bucket compared to the downstream effect of those things, which is weight loss. It was the weight. Yeah. It was the weight. Yeah. And so and many- why are you saying that as if that's, that's like an anomaly statement? Like, oh yeah, I lost weight and I feel better. Like what you're saying is an anomalous statement. Like I didn't lose any weight and all I did was like change my diet and walk. And then somehow like you're still the same weight. What are you talking about? Like what you're saying is the anomalous statement. Many people will start these resolutions where they're moving their body more, they're diversifying their diet, and they will think, wow, I feel so much better, get on a scale, see that they have not lost weight or gained weight, and immediately think, wow, I'm so unhealthy. Usually sometimes, like, I see I see quite a bit where people will start a diet, and they'll weigh themselves a week or two weeks into the diet, and then, like, they'll drastically change their diet up, right? Uh, or they'll change, like, you'll do a lot of things within that two or three, that two, one or two weeks, and they don't see a change in, like, their body composition or the weight on the scale. And I think that that's okay because you didn't just, you you changed your diet up like crazy. Like, you stopped drinking soda, you stopped eating fast food, you stopped doing all this crazy stuff that's, like, making you fat and stuff like that. You got to give it more time because a lot of the weight that you're seeing right there is, like, water weight or it could be other things. So you got to give it more time. You will eventually lose weight if you're on a proper deficit and you're doing the proper things like going to the gym, walking more, whatever it is. That stuff is like super beneficial and it you will eventually, like I said, it's just about consistency and keeping that up because a lot of people will be dissuaded by that. Like I gained weight. I heard, I, I've, I remember talking to this girl who was on a weight loss journey from like 200 pounds down to like 135. And I remember, dude, shit was so tough. This girl would be like, dude, I'm on like a 1300 calorie deficit right now. And I was like, yep, that's good. Because we had worked her down. I had worked her down to that, to that number. Right. And she gained weight one week. Right. She was like, how did I gain weight? What is going on? But she got on creatine. You know, she got on creatine. She gained weight because it was the water weight from that previous week of gaining that stuff. And it was very concerning for her to see the weight go up, but it's like good weight. You know, the creatine got, got her muscles more plumped up. She was like a way really good, like a muscle mommy. Great, beautiful, amazing physique. And I love anybody that has good muscles, you know, muscle bellies and things like that. Just putting on just any type of muscle on your body in general is like super beneficial for you because now you're able to eat more right? If you are really somebody that's trying to eat and you're like a food connoisseur or like a foodie or whatever they call that person, that's great. Gain some muscle because if you gained muscle, your body needs more fuel in order to survive, meaning you can eat more food. That's fucking awesome, right? Good for fucking you. Now you can eat more fucking food. That's awesome. Keep doing that. So yeah, but I have no idea what the fuck Splotch Maker's talking about right now. And immediately think, Wow. Yeah, immediately think. That's the key statement there. Immediately. But you got to keep it going. Keep it going, dude. I'm so unhealthy. I'm so bad. 
man. This is terrible. You're projecting hard. You're projecting real fucking hard. Nobody's saying this shit. That if somebody's a if somebody's in a deficit and they weigh themselves after a week or two weeks of thing and they gain weight or they they're still the same, just keep going. You're fine. You're good. Just take your time. Slow and steady. Don't try to fucking sprint. It's a marathon. Okay. Take your time. It will work eventually. Oh. Because it's not about health. Yes, if we what? really focused on just making our bodies feel better, there wouldn't be an emphasis on weight. What the fuck are you talking about, Splash Maker? There's an emphasis on weight because the problem in and of itself is the fact that you weigh double or triple what you should weigh. If you are somebody that truly cares about health, health behaviors, health promoting behaviors, it would be the weight loss, especially for somebody that is extremely overweight. What are you fucking talking about? Are you trying to tell me that there are people that would benefit from all those things that you just listed and not weight loss? What the fuck are you talking about? How can you sit there in good faith and say that it's not weight loss that's making them feel good and that they don't actually care about health promoting behaviors even though the majority of people that are losing weight feel fucking better? What are you talking about? How can you say like it's so damaging? It's so damaging to say everything that she's saying right now so confidently too. It's like, how can you say any of this shit? That's such, that is such a disrespectful statement to say, given the fact that we have evidence, proof, and fact to show that lowering your fat is going to improve your life, improve your health immensely. Oh my God. If we really focused on just making our bodies feel better, there wouldn't be an emphasis. But it's like, sometimes making your body feel better like what do you mean by body feel better not you don't always have to feel better in order to get something that's going to be good sometimes you need suffering in order to induce the true satisfaction do you understand suffering is not inherently a bad thing right it's not sometimes you need suffering and sometimes the suffering is necessary in order to achieve what you truly desire because if you're moving through your life just being perpetually satisfied and having joy and all this other shit because you're eating big macs and QPs and, and orange cream donuts and shit like that for your entire fucking life. Sure, it's probably very good. It's probably amazing. You probably feel awesome. All that dopamine hitting your fucking brain simultaneously, right? Sure, but it's hard. Of course, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be suffering in comparison to what you have been doing to lose that weight. You're going to have to change up your diet. You're going to have to eat less. You're going to have to walk. That stuff's going to be definitely suffering because you don't ordinarily do that stuff. You understand? So yes, it will be suffering. So yes, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like, oh, feel good. It's not about feeling good sometimes, right? Like the day after you go to the gym, do you feel good? No, you feel fucking, your body is sore and like fucking stiff, right? But you know that you did something good for your body. It's not about, it's not about feeling good. It's about doing the right thing. Health. If we really focused on just making our bodies feel better, there wouldn't be an emphasis on weight. There have literally been studies too, if people want to talk about, oh, well, of course weight loss helps with health. There have been studies where people who literally had their fat just removed, just like lipo, and their markers, their health markers, all that jazz were not improved from the people who stayed fat. Yeah, if you're just like, what do you mean just after, like the same day? Yeah, if you're getting like liposuction and you're getting the 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 bariatric surgery and stuff like that, it does take a little bit of time, uh, especially for bariatric surgery because the bariatric surgery it will like get you a good portion of the way there, but it's still you still need to do more work in order to lose the weight. It's not the end of the road when you get bariatric surgery; you have to keep going, but liposuction is another thing entirely because you're not actually like the problem i see oftentimes when people get liposuction or like these easy to do surgeries not easy to do but you know what i'm saying like people that are looking for quick fixes is that you're not actually solving the problem it's like student loan debt right like i hear oftentimes people go we should forgive student loan debt we should make sure that people are not in debt anymore and it's a great statement it's an awesome statement but you're not actually solving the problem you're just putting a band-aid on it on this fucking bleeding infecting wound right the problem is college and schools are too expensive in general. So if you forgive a whole bunch of debt, that doesn't make the debt, the debt disappears, <coughs> sure, but the problem still remains. The debt will still accumulate. You get what I'm saying? In the same sense of like, if you get liposuction, you didn't solve the problem. The problem was your poor eating habits and your inability to stay active. The problem still remains. You didn't solve the problem. You didn't fix the issue. You get what I'm saying? The issue is still there. It's still bleeding. 
and you're not fixing it. That's the problem, okay? Like, don't think that you're going to be all high and mighty and good because of Afterlife. No, you still have to work on that shit, dude. Weight loss is just a potential possible side effect. It's so disingenuous, bro. This woman is... Like, <laughs> It's like the it's like the the wolf in sheep's clothing. Like you're supposed to see this person and they're saying something nice and on the surface it doesn't seem nice, but it's just not. It's just not good. It is like the number if you are overweight or obese, this is the number one thing in most scenarios that will help you be healthier. 100%. Feel better, be better, be more attractive, have a healthier lifestyle is weight loss. It's just what it is, okay? And to say anything otherwise is is bad is evil is terrible is disgusting is honestly disgusting of changing your lifestyle and just as likely as weight loss is to happen weight maintenance and weight gain those are both equal if not more possible possibilities what are you talking about wait bro if you if you're if you the objective is to lose weight and the outcome is gaining weight. You're doing something wrong. You're still eating too much. You need to lower it even more. A lot of people have no idea where they're supposed to be at, realistically speaking. And they, because they have no idea what calories are or like how the, to navigate through nutrition labels and things like that. So a lot of people have no idea what they're talking about. You might be talking about like gaining weight through that matter. Like you think that you need to eat 4,000 calories, but you actually need to eat 3,500. Sure. We need to be actively deconstructing the idea that weight loss and getting smaller is what health is. But it is for a lot of people though. It's like the majority, for like, okay, if you're already thin, you don't need to lose weight. Can we just say that? That's fine to say. But if you're fat or if you're overweight or you're obese, it is the number one thing in most scenarios, generally speaking, that is going to contribute to good health behaviors, okay? That is what we're talking about, Splotchmaker. And I know you know what we're talking about, too. You're just trying to make it seem like we're the crazy ones by saying that everybody needs to lose weight and it's going to be helpful regardless of who you are. Nobody's saying that. And the fact that you have to go outside and you have to, like, really point out these, like, really, really niche extreme scenarios to try to make it seem like we are the crazy ones is, is so telling. Is so telling of how you actually try to defend your claims. Is what feeling good is. We need to stop. Sometimes you don't need to feel good. You know what I'm talking about? What about the, the dudes that do crack and like sniff fucking heroin in each other's assholes, dude? They don't need to feel good. Dude, it's not about feeling good all the time. Sometimes you need to not feel good. It's okay to suffer a little bit. And suffering sometimes is eating that chicken breast with broccoli. You understand? That may not be suffering for some people, but it would be for a lot of other people is what health is, is what feeling good is. We need to stop. Healthy and feeling good are not synonymous. Let's focus on actual health promoting behaviors in 2024. Bro. No, taking splotch makers advice is crazy, bro. Let's focus on health promoting behaviors in 2024. Not losing weight apparently. Fucking crazy. Please. All right, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody can leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. I have memberships now. So if you want to become a member of my channel, you can totally do so. Um, I know my mustache got weirded during this entire thing. I did it today, but, you know, I didn't use like the really, really, really strong wax because it's really difficult to get it out. And I don't like doing it sometimes. It's like super sticky. You know, that's what she said, right? And it's like super ridiculously hard to get it out when I take showers, right? I take shower at night and it's like super hard to like weave it out and I have to like brush it like 50 times and, you know, just to really get it out of there. So I use like this other really lighter kind of wax and it's not as good and obviously you could tell, but it does its job. It does what it needs to do unless I put in like a million sticks of it, but then my mustache just comes out looking white. So I don't know. Anyway. Uh, you're beautiful people. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in mustache, your preferable mustache. You know, somebody told me, somebody, somebody the other day, you know what they said to me? They said, who else has mustaches between, b besides Mario, Luigi, and Hitler? I don't fucking know. Nikola Tesla? Burt fucking Reynolds? Sam Elliott? What are you talking about? Like, there are plenty of people on this planet, Okay that have mustaches or have had mustaches that were beautiful, amazing creatures.
okay? And it's not just, like, weird now to have a mustache. There are plenty of men nowadays that have very... Henry Cavill had a mustache. He looked great, by the way, with a mustache. I personally thought he looked really good with a mustache. I know you thought he looked good with a mustache, too, right? He did look good with a mustache. I don't care what anybody says. He was a very good-looking man with a mustache when he played that one movie uh, with... Tom Cruise and he was doing Mission Impossible. I like Mission Impossible too. Even though Tom Cruise is like 60 now, it's starting to show a little bit, but I still think he's got it. He's still a good looking guy. Tom Cruise still looks good at his age. I don't care what anybody says. Anyway, um, I just want to remind you that I know that it's like super difficult to be consistent with a diet. I know it's like super, super, super hard to be consistent with walking and, and doing cardio, do weightlifting and all this other stuff. It's very difficult. I understand. But I'm so happy that you've maintained. I'm so happy that you've been consistent throughout that journey and you've made your elbows very lubricated. Your earlobes are more defined. I could see like the the deep grooves and crevices that I could never see before in your body. And I think that's very impressive. It is very impressive to lose the fat, to become more sturdy of a person in the, in the sense of like how how liquidated you are. That's super important. I love you for that. I really do. I think it's like very important. And I'm happy that you're able to continue that journey. And I'm happy to be here with you while you continue that journey. So thank you so much for being such a beautiful, amazing specimen of human being. If I could lick your elbow and your earlobe, I would do it. Because I know that it would taste good. Because I know you cocoa butter them up. Anyway, we're going to end the video here. Uh, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter. If you want to follow me on any of those platforms, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace. Hashtag it girl.